So it's two for 71, and the West Indies now beginning really to assert their superior, superiority in the game. And Richards looking better and better with every shot. Australia were struggling at that stage, three for 61. They weren't sure if Graham Wood was going to return to the crease with his fractured finger. In fact, he did in the end and contributed very significantly. Oh, lovely shot. Desmond Haynes very strong off the legs. On most other nights here at the SCG, that would have gone for four. But as Keith Stackpole has been saying, this outfield is comparatively slow. And uh, the good shots are not getting the full value. Oh, magnificent shot by Richard. Straight drive down the ground. It's holding up. But even that will go all the way. That was a magnificent straight drive by Richards. One of the best shots you can see in the game, the straight drive. Perfectly played by a master batsman. Well, there it is. Australia were four for 64, and the West Indies beginning to show in that comparison that they're doing it pretty easily at the moment. Vivian Richards, in particular, has been very watchful. Just the one boundary. And he's beginning to break loose. That's a beautifully placed shot between the men at extra cover, but Border managing to drag it back on the slow outfield, and Richard settles for three. Two for 91, those West Indian runs beginning to leave the Australian equivalent behind. Well, that's up in the air. It's Phillips who's after it. Will he get there? Don't think so. Not quite. Well, a bit of bad luck there for the Australians. That would have been just what the doctor ordered. Just out of the reach there of the wicketkeeper Phillips. Yeah. It's played into the gap. Marks is after it. Once again, the ball slowing up just before it gets down to the ropes. But once again, the West Indians managing to complete three. Alan Border now keen, desperate to take away West Indies, surging ahead in that comparison after 28 overs. Oh, he's beaten the man at mid-off. Hogs moved across from mid-on, but that shot brings up the 100 for the West Indies. And the same stroke brought up a well-deserved 50 for Desmond Haynes, who straddled hard to compile this half-century. Once again, beautiful placement. That was an attempt at Yorker by Lawson. But nicely placed by Vivian Richards. Eight runs from that over. Two for 106. Oh, and he's dropped him. He definitely hit the cover of that. And uh, it's written all over the face of uh, McCurdy there. A big edge, and Phillips put it down. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Border is absolutely disconsolate. He can't believe it. He's blinking his eyes. Run rate at the moment, 3.4. And Richards needs just a quick little single, a quick dash for his half century. And 50 to Vivian Richards. He's done it in perfect comfort. No chances. And he's played, for the most part, very, very straight indeed. Working quietly on the theory that just making 70 or 80 not out will take West Indies on to victory. That's a lovely stroke from Richards. Slow outfield. Lawson, the fielder. And once again, 
fine piece of fielding from Jeff Lawson. He's given Border tremendous support here with his bowling and fielding tonight. In the air, but quite safe. Marks is the fielder. It's two for one twenty five. In the air. Now that's not easy. McCurdy's after it. No chance. So the West Indies needing fifty one runs to win the Benson Hedges World Series Cup with eight wickets in hand. That's beautifully hit. Two men on the boundary out there. One just in front and one just behind. They're only about 15, 20 metres apart, but Richards found the gap beautifully. Beautiful to watch. Vivian Richards has played it very well here this evening. He's played very straight all the time. And in their personal duel, that puts Richards one in front. A magnificent uh, off drive. Plenty of timing there. It's a slow outfield, but uh, that would have been four on any ground in the world. Way down the ground. And it won't go for four. It's stopped there. It's like uh, a well hit wedge. Beautiful shot. Magnificently played by Richards. That's four runs. His fourth boundary. And he's really taken a toll here of O'Donnell. It's a beautiful onside player. Beautiful shot. Haynes very, very strong off his legs and whipping it down through mid-wicket. Outfield somewhat slow this evening. It won't get there. The batsman pick up three. Desmond Haynes is really a great player off his pads. As, does he time it well, but he hits it with a lot of power, a lot of back lift. He waits, gets the length, and placed it well as anybody could in that gap. Must bowl off stump to Desmond Haynes. You can't afford to get near his pads at all. And worked away under it down there as Phil Marks takes the catch. So the substitute has got something to do down at mid wicket. Well taken, beautifully judged. Richards whipped it off the legs. A long way in the air, and Marks waited for it, judged it well, and held it well. Good catch, it was well struck, it was going down the leg side, he hit with the angle, didn't place it in marks, took his time, caught it beautifully in the end, and Richards departs. What a fine knock. The vice captain out for 76, and the West Indies three for 161 in the 43rd over. They've always been in control of the run rate tonight, they've paced themselves very well, haven't lost wickets. It beats Lawson at mid-off, and enough timing there to get to the boundary rope. Outfield quite lush, and a little on the slow side, but good timing there from Desmond Haynes. And there's the winning runs coming from an edge through the slips, and the West Indies have won the World Series Cup. <laughs> And that's the fourth time for the West Indies. And their second year in succession. They won it in 79-80, defeating England. They then defeated Australia in 81-82, and then again in 
And this year, in the best of three series, they have won it for the fourth time. Well, that was a good win by the West Indians. And in fact, it was an easier victory than it might appear on paper. When we look back in a few years' time and see that they won with just 18 balls to spare, it may appear it was a close match. But once Haynes and Richards got going, then there was no alternative but for a West Indian win. Three for 179, 76 to each of those players with Haynes unbeaten. And the bowling for Australia was dominated by Lawson, a super spell. Ten overs, one made no wicket for 22. McCurdy fought back well. And McDermott once again took two wickets. So the Benson Hedges World Series Cup for 1984-85 goes to the West Indies. And here is their skipper now. Clive Lloyd is downstairs in the presentation area with Mr Barry Smith, the chairman of the Benson Hedges Company. On behalf of the Benson Hedges Company, I'd like to congratulate you, Clive, and your West Indians on winning again and coming back from a difficult situation. Also, Alan Border and the Australians, who so nearly pulled it off in Melbourne, and not forgetting Sri Lanka. They gave us all a lot of pleasure, too. Congratulations, Clive. You've won it again, Thank and you. you deserved it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Well, very nice to see Clive Lloyd uh, taking the trophy there because the West Indies did fight back magnificently. At the same time, the Australians can take great heart from the way they press them. No one thought the Australians would get close to the West Indians in the finals. They won the first and almost won the second. Full credit to Lloyd and his team for coming back and winning and then taking the third final. The player of the finals, well, there were two of them actually. It was a tie between Alan Border, the outstanding player of the first match, and Michael Holding, who bowled out the Australians in this the third game. Now, Tony Gregg is down in the presentation area with the results of the Kit Kat strike rates in both batting and bowling. Uh, Tim Westbrook, the managing director of Roundtree Hodley, Hodley, has come along to announce the winners for us. Welcome, Mr. Westbrook. Thank you, Tony. I'm delighted to announce that the uh, winner of the Kit Kat strike rate for batting <laughs> is Gus Logie. Tony, <laughs> congratulations. Well done. Well done, Gus. Congratulations. Some, some real good shots for a little man. I'm a little man, as you said. I said, some pretty good You've shots. You've had a good trip? Said, very much so. I'm enjoying every minute of it. Congratulations. Thank you. Tim, Thank the bowler. You. I'm delighted to present the award for the Kit Kat strike rate for bowling to Joel Garner. <laughs> the new mean machine. I wouldn't say so. I was a little bit loose in the Melbourne game. A little bit loose down in Melbourne? Yeah. Well, that's the first time you've taken any stick. For a long while. Congratulations. Well, you must have thoroughly enjoyed it. Well, yeah, can't really complain. Two great cricketers and were the winners of the Kit Kat strike rates of 1984-85. We come in now for the McDonald's Cup, which is on uh, Saturday, the 16th of February. That's between New South Wales and South Australia here at the Sydney Cricket Ground. And then the first match in the World Championship.